Caroline, thank you for joining me today. And we're going to be thinking about Psalm 119. Now, Caroline, you wrote two beautiful thought for the day for Livingstone's Church on the Internet. And I read them and they were great readings, I have to say. They really blessed me. And I could really see that this psalm had really done something for you. So, and it is a very long psalm. So, how important is the word of God? Well, for me, um, it's summed up in this psalm because um, I was rereading it yesterday. And in the whole psalm, I only found four verses. And I think, is it 178 verses? I'm not sure now. Yes. But I found four verses that didn't mention God's word. So um, the psalmist has used lots of different words. So promises, precepts, decrees, commands, as well as um, God's word. Um in almost every verse, which is just incredible. Um, it's about three and a half years ago now that God really spoke to me about reading the word. So not studying, but just reading. Studying obviously is important as well. Um, but God really spoke to me about reading the Bible and um, I, I started using um, one, a reading plan that um, goes through the Bible in chronological order. So you're skipping about a bit between books and particularly when you get to the Gospels. Um, but I found it a really helpful way of reading the Bible. And when I, when I got to Psalm 119, I it just blew me away, um, you know, that the different things that the psalmist says about the word of God. It was just amazing. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Now, he, the psalmist covers many different aspects, you know, like keeping us, um, how can we keep away from sin and keeping our focus on God and our instruction that God's word is a lamp and praising God. And so this is just some of the things that you wrote about in your thought for the days. Now, do you think it's good for people to have a plan to help them read with God's word? Because some people don't. But what would you say to people to help them? Like you said, you really felt that God wanted you to just read and that is important as you say as well so what would you suggest to to Christians well I think it's different for everybody when I first became a Christian um the pastor's wife gave me a book of uh, daily reading so you know a few verses and then an explanation um which was really helpful because although I'd been brought up to go to Sunday school, um, I wasn't a Christian. So, you know, I knew the stories like Noah and Jonah and all of that sort of thing, Christmas story, Easter story. Um, but when you come to study or read the Bible as a Christian, it's completely different. Um, I mean, for me, there are so many different ways that you can read and study the Bible. Like I said, I found um, this reading plan where it's in chronological order, very helpful for me. Um, someone else might just read the Bible from beginning to end. You might use study notes like I did when I first became a Christian. Um, you might choose a book and, and really study that in depth. Um, I, I think you've got to find what suits you, you know, and, and what is good for me isn't necessarily good for somebody else. Yes, it is finding out what suits you, isn't it? And it's also making time 
for God as well to read his word and to read it with understanding as well. What did you feel? Because we are going to be looking and interviewing people about this psalm. I think you gave us some inspiration there, Carolyn, to go through each stanza, which is eight verses, and people are going to talk about those eight verses. So did this psalm really do for you, would you say? Well, I, th I think it kind of um, consolidated, if you like, what God had been speaking to me about, um, which was reading. Um, I have favourite books that I will read over and over. Um, some are Christian, some are non-Christian. Um, and I know those books really well because I've read them so many times. And that's one thing I found in reading the Bible I'm I'm learning it without sort of thinking, oh, I've got to learn this chapter or whatever. Um, but it's actually staying in here yeah, um, just through reading it. I I was trying to remember, and I really can't, but I think I've read the Bible from beginning to end seven times in the last three and a half years. Um, so about every six months I've, I've read the bible from cover to cover um so i'm really getting to know it well and this psalm just speaking so much about the word of god and how important it is um to use it for praise to learn it to keep it um in in one verse the psalmist says about keeping it in your heart and and that will keep you on the straight and narrow. Um, there's just so many things in it. Yeah, I was going to mention that very verse about hiding God's word in your heart. That is what the psalmist said there. And we do need to keep God's word dwelling and hiding in our heart. And like you say, it's there for instruction. It's there to help us prevent sinning and doing wrong. Um, it's there to help us praise God as well. So, Carolyn, this is a, a rather long psalm. And I think when you look at it, people want to give up because it's so long. But mm. you never gave up on that psalm, did you? And most people will say, well, I won't read that because it's too long. You know, yeah. and people get a bit, you know, I, I won't read it. Or I might do it another time. But you broke it down. Is that right with your plan? Yes. Yeah. Um, in, in the reading plan that I've got, you read half of it one day and half of it the next day. Um, but I mean, I, I tend to read more than just the set reading for one day because it, it's, it's done for you to read it in um, the plan that I'm using. But I've been doing it in six months. Um, just, I mean, I'm retired now, you know, so I, I've i got more time. But even when I was still working, I was only working part time. So, you know, I had time to do more reading um, than, you know, if you've got small children, you're working full time, uh, whatever it is you're doing, looking after a relative, uh, and it could be all of the above, you maybe haven't got quite so much time um so again that's something that you need to sort of work through with, with God and um ask God what he wants you to do but with this psalm um sorry I'm gesturing at my bible which is just here um because of the way it's written in the um different stanzas yes. you can even read one a day you know, if if that's all the time you've got or or all you can take in. Um, it's because it's eight uh, verses, isn't it, per stanza? Yes, yeah. And, I mean, it does look daunting, and it's 176 verses altogether. Um, but if you, you know, if you just take one bit at a time, um, there's no reason why you can't do it. No. 
So, Caroline, thank you, because that's been really helpful what you've shared there. So we are going to, as I say, look at some of the interviews that will be coming up round about September on this psalm. And we're, people are going to look at each stanza. And I know that people have really got something out of this. So I think mm -hmm. that is absolutely wonderful because they've said how the Lord has spoken to them. Did you find this psalm a comforting psalm, a challenging psalm? What do you feel overall? Um, I think challenging mainly um, because it it's so the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, you know, everything. It's it's all about the word of God. And um, obviously we've got more of the word of God than when the psalm was written. Um, so there's more of it for us to read and study and take in. Um, so, yeah, it's just... For me, it, it's just that extra time I've got now um, as I've got older, like I say, working part time and now retired. Um, so, um, yeah, it's such a blessing. But yes, it's a challenge. Yeah, I'm sure. And as you say, when you're retired, you have probably got a little bit more time to be able to do that. But it is important that we do read the word of God, as we said earlier. And I think this psalm does cover so much, as we have said. So, Caroline, can I say thank you for this lovely introduction of Psalm 119 today? Thank you, Caroline.